So let's be clear, man. What, what's going on with you on Uzi Vert, man? Because um, it just feels, it just feels like he, he, um, y'all, y'all not on the same level. Mm -hmm. You ain't got nothing to do with the 24 karat shit in his forehead. <laughs> He's definitely on a whole nother level. It's on a whole nother level. 24. I don't know if there's a lot of niggas on Uzi. Level, when, like. when you saw the 24 karat diamond, you was like, how much of that did I make happen? <laughs> like, what, what, what did you say? What did you think? I thought it was genius. I thought it was genius. Yeah, I, th I think like, like Uzi has been doing since the beginning of his career. It's just like. You know, he's he's a master at um, of attracting attention. You mm. know what I'm saying? And, and like, you know, I, I saw him say, like, you know, when he saw the diamond, he was like, I'm a little Uzi. Like, I can't just put that on my finger. I got to put that on my fucking head. Wow. So, and that's just the type of, that's the type of, like, individual he's always been. Like, you know, wow. he, was, he, he was a rock star from the beginning. So, to see where he's at now and, you know, to watch him put a diamond in his head is like, well, that's, well, that's well, that little nigga right there. But maybe you ain't exactly understanding my question. The rumor <laughs> is he got lit and he left. Is that? I mean, you gotta keep it real, drama. At some point, you gotta address this shit. You gotta stop being light skinned and I mean, like, you know. <laughs> I, I've been talking about it recently. Like, you know, I mean, the thing with us is that you know, me and Cannon and Lake and you know, Generation Now. Like, uh, when a lot of it was going on, we kind of would set silent, you know, and, and never really like was public and you know, we didn't really want to get in anything like a public situation. And honestly, like, you know, like to this day but I still he was got pretty love. public about it. Remember yeah, he, the was, tweets. he was he was a no, I know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Right? Right, cool. Like yeah, he put the tweets on and everything. So, you know, and he created a certain narrative. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And in a situation like that when, you know, Uzi is, you know, one of the biggest artists in the world, like mm -hmm. there wasn't even a, a space or a place for me to really for us to feel like we had to defend ourselves. Like, we know where we come from. We know we do good business, you know what I'm saying? And like, if there's any, if there's a personal situation, mm. I can't help that. Like, you know, I can't help how the guy might feel about me personally, but mm. I know when it comes to business or, you I think know, it was like, they, they said that y'all was holding his music up. Yeah, we're, we're in the business of putting music out. Right. So, you know, I'm holding the music up would not help us in no, no, no way. I always wonder that, like Cass. Like I always wonder that. Like sometimes when a rumor is not true about you, right? Why wouldn't you just address the rumor just immediately? But people train you not to, right? I don't I even know. Had I, public. I, I mean, but but I feel like discussing it then would it wouldn't have been in a space because again, his success is our success. Right. We're still in business with Lil Uzi Vert. Right. So Woo. you know what I'm saying? Like, about come to Death Row Records. That's black on champagne right there, <laughs> goddamn. Do it, that, that, that. Make some noise for Jay Z and that deal that just happened, man. I'm so proud, man. I'm so proud that we could take our culture and, and, and the people outside our culture has to recognize and buy into our culture and be a part of our culture because that saying is for real. If they can't beat us, they gotta join us, exactly. goddamn it. So make some noise for that. But, but, but um, you still getting money, money with them. But is this your first time an artist was was was? You know, no, um, the scrunto, you yeah, the scrunto. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's a different situation. It's always gonna happen because, yeah, I mean, I, I think that happens all the time. But you know, Uzi was literally our our first artist that was signed to our label. So, I mean, we came out of the gate like with a, a super win, like you know, with success. So, you know, obviously, we I would have wanted it to go a different way. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like with our quote unquote first artist per se. You know what I'm saying? And you know, putting the label on his back, and you know champion generation now, but it didn't go that way. But it's fine because like, you know, the the, the thing about it and the, the reason I can speak positively about it is because, mm. you know, since that situation, mm. you know, we've went on and, and created another superstar and you know what I'm saying? Like- Who, Jack Harlow? Yeah, Jack Harlow. And, and you know, put it in perspective, like, you know what I mean? Like, um, I've been here a long time. Like, this is right. what I do. I'm cut from the cloth, so, right. you know. I'm gonna keep God going. Damn, make some noise for that. Okay. Cassidy, I'm, I'm gonna bring you up because you even went through a discrepancy with, with Swiss at one point. How did that start and how did y'all end that? Correct that. Um, <clears throat> me and Swiss never went through a discrepancy. That's a misunderstanding that the world got. Okay. I guess they think when people separate, you know what I'm saying, they had to go through some misunderstanding or some type of problem. Right. But me and Swiss, we never even argued before. We never had mm -hmm. no misunderstanding. Wow. Never beef with Swiss before. We never had no confrontations. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that was definitely in the public's eye. Public. We just, yeah, we just parted ways as businessmen. I wanted to go in a different direction than he was going in. Mm. We didn't agree in the direction that we wanted to go in for my career. So we just decided to part ways and just go in different directions. But it's all love. It was never. I think that's any called discrepancy, though. But I'm gonna let you get away with it, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let you get away with it. I mean, <laughs> 
Yeah, like differences. That's what the discrepancy is, like Being differences. Being in the business, I learned how you got to separate the two. When I first got in it, I was a young boy. I was 17, so I used to look at it the same. I looked at all of the rappers that I looked up to as street niggas. Mm -hmm. So when they were saying all of the shit that they were saying, I believed it. Mm -hmm. So when I got in the business and niggas was calling you they brother and saying they love you and fuck with you because you in the limelight, mm -hmm. I thought that shit was true. Mm -hmm. I really actually believed it. I, I looked at it like it was a street nigga telling me the same shit. Right. But I learned how the business go, and I learned it's a complete separation from the business and what niggas say to you, and sometimes niggas will say whatever they got to say to you to continue to do good business. Right. So once I learned that, I learned I had to do what was best for me and my brand. And all of the time what's best for me and my brand don't coincide with what Swiss trying to do at the time. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why we parted. And, and that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. Now, Michael Blacksman, one time, yes, just one nigga. time, one time only, mm -hmm. I thought you went too far. Okay. What did I do, my nigga? First of all, this shit's called drink champ. You know what he got drinking. Oh, yeah, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I didn't, I didn't know what you were doing. I thought you were on Instagram. You were a tequila nigga? You were a douce nigga or you were champagne nigga? Give me champagne, nigga. Okay, get some champagne, goddamn. My bad, my bad. Okay, give me a cup, give me a cup, goddamn. Where's the cup set? Celine, baby. I got Celine, but I'm poor. I'm poor. You want some champagne too? Take some champagne. All right, this is the one and only time I felt like you went too far. Did I? Fuck your ex-woman. No! <laughs> no, it got nothing to do with me personally. Okay. Um, I'm watching you on The Breakfast Club. Right. And this is when Kevin Hart, I, this is the first time I felt sorry for Kevin Hart. Even though I know, he, know he's rich, he's rich as shit. Right? <laughs> but this is the first time because, you know, as a married man, mm -hmm. I, I, I know that this, there can be slip-ups or something like that. I haven't had one, but I know that it can be. Slip ups. I know that none of us is perfect, right? I know that. Come on, y'all niggas. I'm walking a very thin line. Listen, I know, I know that none of us. Hey, put that back in here. Got to stay on ice. So I know that none of us is perfect. So I felt like comedians should have gave Kevin Hart the benefit of the doubt. Fuck that. Nobody gets a break, motherfucker. <laughs> It's an equal opportunist, motherfucker. Right, 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 right. No, man. I know. I know. I made fun of Kev right. cheating. I made right. fun of Kev snitching on himself. Like, oh, oh, okay. Kev, when it happened, nobody knew yet. Right. You know, he tried to tell us in the head in advance. So right. I said, "Nigga, you're snitching on yourself. Right. Don't snow." So they had to put out the tape. Huh? He had to put out the well, tape. He, he admitted he, to it before it came out. I guess out. he knew the tape was coming out, so he tried to, you know, tell mm. us in advance. And mm. I, it's just the way he did it, it was funny to me. Right. And nobody gets a break with me. Is friend. it ever too soon of a joke? Like, like. Um, I mean, if somebody dies, then yeah. Okay. You know, but right. besides that, man, I don't. Okay. So, I, I don't even think death, man. Death, I see people it. come right out the gate. That's it, death? Like, what just, is. Definitely. No, no, I mean, with me too soon, like, bro, an hour later, motherfucker? What you mean? <laughs> like, 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 what if your homie, what if your homie's on Instagram getting knocked out? And this is your homie, though. Okay. Um, are you supposed to call him and be like, yo, you know I'm about to make a joke on you, or you just go in? I, you know it depends. If you guys communicate on the regular, me and Kev, right. yeah, we're cool, but we don't like, we don't like talk on the regular. Right. At that moment, at that point, we wasn't talking on the regular, right. so. I mean, I probably, if I was, it was somebody I was talking to the regular, you know, I probably would have did that. Call it, you know, I'm about to light your ass up, be right. prepared. But, but we don't really communicate on the regular, so I just said, uh, you know, I just went in and just. But did Kev thing. call you and be like, damn, bro, could he give me the pass? No, no, he didn't. <laughs> no, nah, if you'd have called me, I probably would give him a pass. Because it's, I, I just, so I figured he didn't have a problem game? with it. Like, it's fair game? I didn't mm -hmm. think he had a problem with it till I saw it on the Breakfast Club. Okay. You know, I just thought he, I'm just, you know, I'm just being a comedian. Yeah, I saw it on the Breakfast Club too. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, I thought you went too far. <laughs> I thought, I thought, I, I thought, and his reaction too was like, "Oh shit, damn!" Because I thought, you know, I think comedians are like battle rappers. Like battle rappers have no feelings, right? Or do y'all have feelings? Like when y'all go on the, and y'all spitting against each other, like you know what I mean? Like the thing about it, everybody make fun of him. Even his own friends did. They just have a bigger platform. So when right. I make fun of him, millions of people see it. And that's probably what really. Mm. But come on, comedian man, you can't be sensitive. I'm right. not sensitive. Nothing could hurt my feelings, right. motherfucker. Right, God damn, God damn. So now drama. We're gonna get into it right now. Rumor <laughs> is Drake smashed your girl. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, what other way I'm supposed to say it? Yeah. Drake had sexual relations <laughs> with a girl that was affiliated with you. All of a sudden, Meek, Philly, Delphia, artist, winds up in Mean Street Studios. He hears these references of these other songs, discrepancies. What's my man's name? He ain't been around since. Quentin Miller. Quentin Miller. Now, all roads led to DJ Drama at that time. All he, roads? 
They didn't lead to Meek Mill? No, I said Meek Mill. Uh-huh. I'm saying how Meek Mill got it. Gotcha. All roads led to that. To you. So now for lack of 